Inmates is a 1973 thriller directed by Arthur Marks and starring Roberta Collins, Marky Bay, Pat Woodall, Lori Rose, Christina Hart, David Moses, John Mabry, Gary Mascaro, and Ken Scott. Well, this movie wastes no time. We're introduced to Beth and Carla. There is trouble beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Girls unite. Which this film appears to be a ripoff of. I mean, I believe women should have basic rights, like 60% for women, 30% for men, and 10% for the other kind. Wow. Then we're introduced to Heather and Brea with some exposition about whatever. Look at those pants. Hey. Hey, how about a group sex clinic for people with hang-ups? I mean, we could answer all the forbidden questions. Could you imagine throwing that idea out on the internet? And would they be able to get insured? There's some political talk in the locker room and then the quartet all meet up in an empty classroom where they're planning on their trip to Lake Arrowhead for the summer. Who is Nick? Oh, he's some guy I picked up on. Sort of a cross between Truman Capote and Steve McQueen. What? Anyway, you have a whole house full of relatives. Mm -mm, just one. I'm babysitting for my little cousin this summer. I haven't seen her in ages. She's probably not going to be so little anymore. Sex is a biological urge triggered by hormones secreted by your gland. That's hot. They go clubbing and is that Michael Shannon's dad? This whole party sequence adds nothing to the movie, so let's move on. Everyone has traveled to Lake Arrowhead. Yes, Heather? Hi. Yeah, she grew up. How have you been? Fine. This seems to be exhausted. Do you want some milk and cookies or uh, Coke or something? Oh, no. Little nose candy, eh? This summer is going to be fantastic. I mean, I hope I never forget it. I hope not, otherwise this is going to be a dull fucking movie. Where's John? That's the boy I used to go with to have me home by 12. Fine. So we go out to the dune buggy races. Where Jesus, this kid never shuts the fuck up. Water skiing! This guy shows up and gets a job because plot. There's lots of things to do around here. Couldn't we use some help even if it's only for a few days? That's a horrible idea. Oh no, that's not sketch at all. What's Carla up to? Oh yes, please let this become a slasher flick. If there's anything I can do for you, my office is right up there. You bet, Bria. Nice meeting you, Harold. See you, Aaron. See ya. Those guys will be beating off later tonight. Oh, I guess Carla's guy is the ski instructor. And it appears he's trying to sling dick all over town. Beth takes a dive and then asks some questions about some guy in a boat. Carla gets asked out by Mike, but he's denied. Hey, look, it's the guy in the boat. And they go for a drink. You're not married or anything, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> can't find the right man. Well, I'm a man. Talk about not beating around the bush! And Beth agrees to go out on a date. Party time! God damn it, why don't you get off my back? Why don't you start acting like a husband? Stop messing around with all those foxy ladies. Why don't you? Drop dead. Domestic bliss. I don't understand. It's the same thing every day. You fight, and you fight, and you're tearing my insides out. Go for the Oscar! This is a family? You two must be kidding. Fifteen cents? Fuck! There's some dancing as this recently introduced character has lust in his eyes. Socks makes his move and denied. This is stalking. And that turns into assault. They play hide-and-seek with the girl ending up at Heather's place. Hey, baby, come on out! I'm not gonna hurt you! 
You creep! Get out of here! Aw, oh, you sweet talker, you. And he fucking leaves. I'll call the police. No, that's not necessary. Ah, uh, yes they are. And she goes ahead and walks home. That's what we call poor judgment. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, I guess we should have drove her home. She had over 100 stab wounds in her body. Jesus! You know, it'd be good for you just to lie right here in the mud and get your ass dirty. <clears throat> Saved by the horn. Gee, this is the first time I've ever been served by a naked waiter. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed about films of this era is that the really young girls go for these old fucks. Then they get it on. At the camp, Harold gets teased, so Brea comes out to give counsel. Aaron's supposed to be my friend. Well... He's nothing but a wise guy. Well, why didn't you beat him up? Damn. I'll be your porn up, stepmom. See? Old fucks. It's just like old times, isn't it? You're as good as you were when you were 16. 16? Jesus! The hell? Are you crazy? I could have killed you. No shit. And who cares about me? I'm the one who does all the work around here. I take care of the hotel, I sweep up the floor and clean up the messes. This is why your husband hates you! What the fuck?! There's some more water skiing and our mysterious killer now has a gun. Look at that fake 70s blood. Enjoy your local library. Yes, um, I'm, I'm looking for a book on sex. Sex? What's the matter, you chicken? Maybe, but at least I'm not a peak freak. What's the matter, you queer? Knowing the era, I kind of had a feeling that comment was coming. And Harold whips his ass. Paula shows up for a date with Arnie, and we now know why he needed those sex books. You know, I think you're a very beautiful girl, Paula. I think you're a really nice boy. I'm not a boy, Paula. I'm a man. Well, you called her a girl. You're not the first girl I've brought up here. Oh, really? I suppose you've had tons of experience. You're blowing it. Huh. I guess not. And he blows it. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm not in the mood. But you checked out all those books! You know what they're called, don't you? But you're a virgin! Wow! A real live boy virgin! Stop it! Stop it! You know, Paula is kind of a bitch. That night at Heather's house... I'm pretty sure the killer is Arnie. Paula flees and shit. Then the killer chases Heather as Paula calls the fuzz. <laughs> shit, that was a close one. Did you get a good look at him? Oh, then, then, it was a woman! No it wasn't, it was a well-read virgin that got teased last night. And now it's time to love them and leave them. Well, let me give you some advice. The next time you wake up in some guy's bed, don't nail him to the cross. That's a bit much. Arnie goes looking for Paula and has the hatchet. Dad? Cousin? No one does anything about the obvious grooming. Harold, what if we didn't go back to camp tonight? You're going to lose your job. Mm. You're fired! It's party time! Can we wrap this up in seven minutes? Look who's here. 
And the woman starts shooting up the place. Holy shit! Mike gets his piece and oh, look, I'm so shocked. There's a chase and Arnie is dead. And the film ends like this, which doesn't feel right, but fuck it, it's over. Thank God! When I first checked out the film The Roommates for the show, I figured it'd be one of those early 70s free love flicks. I did not expect a pseudo slasher that ends with a fucking mass shooting. The beginning of the film is boring as hell, but picks up just enough to keep you interested. Sure, there's a mystery, if you want to call it that. You can guess the killer pretty early in the film. Overall, The Roommates is a jiggle picture stuck in the year that it was produced. Can I do something for you? You already have.